As you might have guessed from the music in this segment, we're going to talk about marijuana. And more importantly, the marijuana conspiracy. To do that, I'm going to read an article by Doug Yerke titled The Marijuana Conspiracy, The Real Reason Hemp Is Illegal. You can find it at IlluminatiNews.com. And it begins. Marijuana is dangerous. Pot is not harmful to the human body or mind. Marijuana does not pose a threat to the general public. Marijuana is very much a danger to the oil companies, alcohol, tobacco industries, and a large number of chemical corporations. Various big businesses with plenty of dollars and influence have suppressed the truth from the people. The truth is if marijuana was utilized for its vast array of commercial products, it would create an industrial atomic bomb. Entrepreneurs have not been educated on the product potential of pot. The super rich have conspired to spread misinformation about an extremely versatile plant that, if used properly, would ruin their companies. Where did the word marijuana come from? In the mid-1930s, the M word was created to tarnish the good image and phenomenal history of the hemp plant. As you will read, the facts cited here with references are generally verifiable in the Encyclopedia Britannica, which was printed on hemp paper for 150 years. All school books were made from hemp or flax paper until the 1880s. It was legal to pay taxes with hemp in America from 1631 until the early 1800s. Refusing to grow hemp in America during the 17th and 18th centuries was against the law. You could be jailed in Virginia for refusing to grow hemp from 1763 to 1769. George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and other founding fathers grew hemp. Benjamin Franklin owned one of the first paper mills in America and it processed hemp. Also, the War of 1812 was fought over hemp. Napoleon wanted to cut off Moscow's export to England. For thousands of years, 90% of all ships, sails, and rope were made from hemp. The word canvas is Dutch for cannabis. 80% of all textiles, fabrics, clothes, linen, drapes, bedsheets, etc. were made from hemp until the 1820s with the introduction of the cotton gin. The first Bibles, maps, charts, Betsy Ross's flag, the first drafts of the U.S. Declaration of Independence and the Constitution were made from hemp. The first crop grown in many states was hemp. 1850 was a peak year for Kentucky producing over 40,000 tons. Hemp was the largest cash crop until the 20th century. Oldest known records of hemp farming go back to 5,000 years in China, although hemp industrialization probably goes back to ancient Egypt. Rembrandts, Gainsboroughs, Van Goghs, as well as most early canvas paintings were principally painted on hemp linen. In 1916, the U.S. government predicted that by the 1940s all paper would come from hemp and that no more trees need to be cut down. Government studies report that one acre of hemp equals 4.1 acres of trees. Plans were in the works to implement such programs. Quality paints and varnishes were made from hemp seed oil until 1937. 58,000 tons of hemp seeds were used in America for paint products in 1935. Henry Ford's first Model T was built to run on hemp gasoline and the car itself was constructed from hemp. On his large estate, Ford was photographed among his hemp fields. The car, grown from the soil, had hemp plastic panels whose impact strength was ten times stronger than steel. In 1938, on the cover of Popular Mechanics, the title read, Hemp Called Billion Dollar Crop. It was the first time a cash crop had a business potential to exceed a billion dollars. Mechanical Engineering Magazine published an article entitled, The Most Profitable and Desirable Crop That Can Be Grown. It stated that if hemp was cultivated using 20th century technology, it would be the single largest agricultural crop in the United States and the rest of the world. The following information comes directly from the United States Department of Agriculture's 1942 14-minute film encouraging and instructing patriotic American farmers to grow 350,000 acres of hemp each year for the war effort. When Grecian temples were new, hemp was already old in the service of mankind. For thousands of years, even then, this plant had been grown for cordage and cloth in China and elsewhere in the East. For centuries prior to about 1850, all the ships that sailed to the western seas were rigged with hemp and rope and sails. 
for the sailor no less than the hangman, hemp was indispensable. Now with Philippine and East Indian sources of hemp in the hands of the Japanese, American hemp must meet the needs of our army and navy as well as of our industries. When the navy's rapidly dwindling reserves are gone, American hemp will go on duty again. Hemp for mooring ships, hemp for tow lines, hemp for tackle and gear, hemp for countless naval uses both on ship and shore. Just as in the days when Old Ironside sailed the seas victorious with her hempen shrouds and hempen sails, hemp for victory. Hemp cultivation and production do not harm the environment. The USDA Bulletin number 404 concluded that hemp produces four times as much pulp with at least four to seven times less pollution. It has a short growing season. It can be grown in any state. The long roots penetrate and break the soil to leave it in perfect condition for the next year's crop. The dense shock of leaves, 8 to 12 feet above the ground, chokes out weeds. Hemp, this new crop, can add immeasurably to American agriculture and industry. In the 1930s, innovations in farm machinery would have caused an industrial revolution when applied to hemp. This single resource could have created millions of new jobs generating thousands of quality products. Hemp, if not made illegal, would have brought America out of the Great Depression. William Randolph Hearst and Hearst Paper Manufacturing Division of Kimberly Clark owned vast acreage of Timberlands. The Hearst Company supplied most paper products. Patty Hearst's grandfather, a destroyer of nature for his own personal profit, stood to lose billions because of hemp. In 1937, DuPont patented the processes to make plastics from oil and coal. DuPont's annual report urged stockholders to invest in its new petrochemical division. Synthetics such as plastics, cellophane, celluloid, methanol, nylon, rayon, dacron, etc. can now be made from oil. Natural hemp industrialization would have ruined over 80% of DuPont's business. Andrew Mellon became Hoover's secretary of the treasury and DuPont's primary investor. He appointed his future nephew-in-law, Harry J. Anslinger, to head the Federal Bureau of Narcotics and Dangerous Drugs. Secret meetings were held by these financial tycoons. Hemp was declared dangerous and a threat to their billion dollar enterprises. For their dynasties to remain intact, hemp had to go. These men took an obscure Mexican slang word, marijuana, and pushed it into the consciousness of America. A media blitz of yellow journalism raged in the late 1920s and 1930s. Hearst's newspapers ran stories emphasizing the horrors of marijuana. The menace of marijuana made headlines. Readers learned that it was responsible for everything from car accidents to loose morality. Films like Reefer Madness, Marijuana Assassin of Youth, and Marijuana the Devil's Weed were propaganda designed by these industrialists to create an enemy. Their purpose was to gain public support so that anti-marijuana laws could be passed. Examining uh, the following quotes from The Burning Question, also known as Reefer Madness, it states that marijuana is a violent narcotic causes acts of shocking violence, causes incurable insanity, has soul-destroying effects, and a man under the influence of the drug killed his entire family with an axe. More vicious, more deadly even than those soul-destroying drugs, heroin and cocaine is the menace of marijuana. Reefer Madness did not, end, did not end with the usual, the end. The film concluded with these words plastered on the screen, tell your children.